of continuing our conversation with Attorney General Mike Hunter about his reelection campaign and promised you some viewer questions. So we'll fire off this Can't first wait. one here. This is from John Curtis. And John, very straightforward here with his question, just says, why should I vote for you? So one of the things that we discovered when we, when we did our sort of after action review of the primary and the runoff is when we were able to really communicate to voters what we've been doing on their behalf, we had their vote. So whether it's saving folks hundreds of millions of dollars at the Corporation Commission in rate reductions and refunds, whether it's holding opioid manufacturers accountable for the death and destruction that they've, uh, they're responsible for here in the state, uh, keeping bad people off the street, uh, just generally keeping people safe. You know, that's as far as I'm concerned, that's our magnetic north. That's the most important function that we perform. We take it very seriously. And again, uh, if you are looking for somebody that's going to be focused on those things and somebody who's going to keep politics out of the office, I'm your man. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go to this one from Margaret. Uh, Margaret was interested in some things that have been happening out in Washington. And her question is, with him being an attorney, what were his thoughts on how the Kavanaugh confirmation was handled? And does he support Brett Kavanaugh as a Supreme Court justice? I supported uh, Mr. Kavanaugh's uh, nomination and uh, confirmation of Justice Kavanaugh. I, I think at some point uh, there's got to be more civility, not only in uh, confirmations of judges and justices, but there's got to be more civility in politics and campaigns. Uh, and how we do that, how we accomplish that is, uh, is something that there needs to be more of a dialogue about after maybe we get through November. Uh, it can't be a how do I destroy my opponent? And so I don't want to sound too idealistic, but you know, there ought to be things about you as a candidate for public office that commend you to that job. And the approach of destroying your candidate and maybe in a, in a uh, offhand way, uh, reporting why you're qualified or why you're well credentialed, uh, that's not a good approach. And so getting back to what uh, commends the person for public service as opposed to uh, an attack on your opponent. Um, again, that's just going to be a more constructive approach. And I just felt like the confirmation process was, again, in the category of you know, how do we destroy uh, Judge Kavanaugh. And there was certainly dialogue that was, was troubling for a lot of folks. But at the end of the day, uh, there needs to be a focus on how we can be more civil, how we can be more professional. <laughs> Jack Tinsley writes in, he says, how do you handle the laws that the legislature passes that are unconstitutional? And what have you done in the past as AG when yeah. that's come about? So uh, I have an affirmative responsibility as attorney general uh, to defend legislation. When the legislature passes legislation and the governor signs legislation, it's law and it's presumed to be constitutional. So. One of the most important parts of the job, as I see it, is humility, uh, not taking the position that you know better than uh, maybe the legislature or the governor. And so I'm the attorney for the legislature and the governor when legislation passes. And you don't know until there's a challenge and the, the Supreme Court perhaps makes a decision about constitutionality. So that's a job that I don't have responsibility, I don't have discretion about. Uh, Mark Wedge says, what challenges has the AG office had in regards to the medical marijuana law? A lot of Oklahomans talking about this one. A lot of challenges. Really? So uh, list those you, out for you've us. You've got to respect, uh, Mark, you've got to respect the, the voters decision that there needed to be a, a very liberal, very flexible medical marijuana law in this state. And when I say liberal and flexible, there are a lot of gray areas. Uh, there are a lot of uncertainties with regard to how this law gets implemented. Um, the uh, Health Department Board uh, thoughtfully and uh, in a altruistic way, trying to do the right thing, uh, they uh, promulgated a number of rules which were more expansive than... Uh, and just so you know, you have 30 seconds They here. needed to be. <laughs> So what we've tried to do is, is work with the legislature, uh, work with the health department and their board members uh, to get this law implemented. But the legislature is going to have some work to do because there are issues that need to be addressed. Uh, so while we're honoring the voters' decision 
uh, there's got to be fine tuning of that law going into the new session and we'll work with the legislature and the governor. All right. Timing is perfect. You've done this before, Mike Hunter. Yeah. Thank you so much Thanks, for your Martin. time. We appreciate it. We'll follow your race closely. Yeah. And now just so everyone knows, if you're just now tuning in, we did interview Mike Hunter's opponent, Democratic candidate Mark Miles, just last week. That interview is already available on our website. You can go check it out there and we'll post this one on there soon as well. <laughs>